There's a lot of paranoia these days about swapping camshafts, and for good reason. Uh, you know, sketchy metals, uh, they took the zinc out of the oil. Um, fly top of cams are kind of a thing in the past, but for a lot of people making the swap to a roller, isn't really in the cards, you know. You, you could spend $700 or $1,000 just making that conversion. So, for the most part, budget builders stick with their flat top at, you know, hydraulic, you know, regular cams. Uh, now, there's plenty of material out there on camshaft break-in, you know, the right procedure. You know, setting, setting the engine up so that it starts first click at a key, running at a 2,500 RPM for like, you know, 20 minutes, a half hour, right, to get that break-in. And, you know, there's, like I said, there's plenty of material out there on how to break in a camshaft. But one thing you never see discussed is the lifters, and more importantly, the lifter bores. The lifter bore is the key to, to is one of the main keys to proper camshaft break-in. Now here's the thing, right? When an engine sits for any amount of time, so let's say you've got a block sitting in your basement, or your, your garage that you're going to build. When it sits for any amount of time, bare metal parts will start to, to surface rust over. And you've got like a block like this, which is, you know, as it was, hasn't been cleaned, and it's got that fine coating of like oily sludge that's kept it rust free. But the lifter bores, they weren't protected and they don't have that fine layer of sludge. And so the lifter bores start to pick up a bit of a, a fuzz. Now, when you go to put the lifter in, you notice there's resistance here, right? The lifter doesn't want to go, see? So why this is important is because the lifter has to spin in order for the, the, the camshaft to function correctly and not wear out. This lifter has to be free to spin on the lobe. Camshaft lobes are cut on an angle and the purpose of that is to grab the outside of the lifter and spin it and that's, that's you know, how it distributes its wear. That's also why the lifter mates to the lobe and you can't change that relationship. That relationship, a lot of that relationship is based on the resistance and the slop fit of the lifter bore. So at any rate, here's the thing. When you go to take a block like this and assemble it, you can throw the cam in it, lube it all up where you're supposed to, lube up the lifters, throw them in. But if you've got this kind of resistance where the lifter doesn't want to just flop in and out, it means it's not going to be free to spin when it's loaded. See, here's another one. See, it doesn't want to go. Now, here's one bore that we found in this engine that fits correctly. Now, you see that? See the way it's just like no resistance? Ideally, if this block was sitting upright, you would drop this lifter in and it would just fall out the bottom. That's what you need. That's the kind of fit you need for the lifter bore. Now, if you've got a situation like this, the way to fix that was with a wheel cylinder hole. And you could buy those at any auto parts store. They look just like engine hones, except that they're really small and they're intended to do wheel cylinders. They work perfectly on lifter bores as well. Just give the bore two or three strokes with the with the you know with the the uh, the wheel cylinder hone. Don't go too far because if you open this up too far, you'll have oil control issues. All you want to do is just knock whatever fuzz happens to be in the bore out. So this way, when that lifter falls in there, it's free to just spin and flop around. Oh. See, that's, that's what it's supposed to be like, exactly just like that. See, nothing holding it in, nothing holding it back. Right, and then you'll get this one, right? And I can't even get it in the hole. See, same thing, and she won't go all the way out. And you can see the resistance here. So, that's it. Hopefully it saves you a few bucks. See you tomorrow.